This angry tourist is going viral for his crazy rant at a restaurant in Singapore. I guess the question is, what were people supposed to do? And also, why is he so angry? Yeah, this sparked such a wide range of opinions from east to west. We're talking about the eastern world internet versus the western world internet. Anyway, let's just run the clip. I will drop every last one of you. Now, f and back the f up. I will close your establishment down, and I will every family member you got from here to China, you little Because I own China too. F you. Then tell him to back up. Long story short, Andrew, this guy is clearly mad that he could not get his Russian food with a high non twist at Shasilik restaurant. They closed the kitchen at 9 p.m. He came in at 9.20. They tried to explain to him that, hey, sorry, sir, there's nothing we can do. Kitchen closed. And he bugs out. And he kind of leans into, like, almost psychopathic sort of, like, racist territory yeah i mean he was saying a lot of wild stuff he said i will close your establishment down i will f every member of your family all the way back to china uh also <laughs> i own china too and i also own the singapore police force he was just saying all types of crazy stuff i guess i'm starting to wonder like does he actually really think he has some power or position and who is he and uh what happened to him afterwards did the police come find him and question him i don't know but david i will say this the response from asians in the west like asian americans is quite different than the response of asians in singapore at least on the internet but we're gonna go through it so please hit that like button check out other episodes of the hot pop boys yeah i mean i would say the reaction from the asian americans was like way more uh wanting to be violent right yeah. or, or or at least respond to aggression with aggression yes obviously the response on the in, even on internet circles in the east was a lot more uh, docile, withheld, possibly, you know, just trying to be very nonviolent. Mm -hmm. And um, this sparked a huge discussion about whether Asian guys need to stand up more for themselves. Are they doing it the right way? What are the pros and cons of our culture and our approach to high energy conflict situations like this? So anyway, let's get into the comments section. This guy said, uh, you know, this white dude just threatened to rape his lineage. Like we need some uncles to take care of this dude immediately. Yeah, so I guess my thing is that he He's talking to restaurant staff. First of all, this guy's got to be drunk, like crazy drunk, or he's like really wildly disturbed. Some people said that he possibly forgot his medicine when, you know how like some people forget to pack their medicine when they go abroad or something like that, but they have, you know, some some sort of anger issue, some sort of pH imbalance. Yeah, I mean, he didn't get violent, obviously, so that's a good thing, but he definitely sounded like he was going to, but I could see why people want to punch this guy. But I will say this, for a restaurant person to punch him in Singapore, that's they know Singaporeans know if you live and work there that's going to complicate things that's like legally not necessarily a good idea unless that person is attacking well you. Singapore in particular is a very very strict country mm. and uh like we said as violent as this guy's tone was it's not like he pushed any of the restaurant staff in the chest right or anything right like there that. was no physical altercations as far as what we know from this video but I totally understand this sentiment somebody said y'all got to defend yourself in this type of situations especially in your homeland you got to put this man down and shut him up like you've basically uh you know you can't take the high road or else these like white guys are going to keep coming to singapore or whatever mm -hmm. asian city insert here and like act like they run the place yeah trust me there are parts of singapore that if he acted like this i do think that someone is possibly fighting him, you know, but maybe not at this restaurant. This is a high end, probably expatriate expat restaurant. You know, it's like serving a certain type of Russian food with a Chinese twist. So of course it's like very fancy smancy. So no, I highly doubt that anything super crazy. Yeah, whereas was in uh, Orchard Road, which is oh, like yeah. a very, very high tourist zone. Very like you said, it's probably very expensive. This is not just like a, uh, was a Ah Beng yeah. restaurant in the HDB yeah, zone, right? Right, right, right. Somebody said Singapore's worships uh, white people above anything else. That's why they're bending over and taking the hate. Do you think there's any truth to this? Because so, Singapore was a former British colony, you know, so, you know, there's some aspect of like, you know, maybe white people are there. People who look like me used to run this place like 60 years ago. Yeah, well, David, I feel like, you know, we've spent some time in the British colonies like Hong Kong, Singapore, and Malaysia before. And I must say, I always felt like I thought Singapore handled the white people better. Like, I thought white people in general 
are in check more in Singapore than Hong Kong. Yes, this happened, but I would say generally that was my vibe. Oh, I because like- you know why, Andrew? They most famously caned an American kid who was egging cars. And I remember even Bill Clinton back then was like, man, I, I hope you guys don't cane him. And the guy was just like, we don't care. Ah, bop, yeah. Bop. Yeah, no, I feel like Singapore, if this guy would have crossed the line, and I'm, I'm assuming he doesn't have some super crazy connections to the government. Uh, if he crossed the line, I do think he's totally getting arrested and maybe beat down. Somewhere. Somebody said, uh, imagine going to another country and being this entitled and rude. I mean, what do you think? Do you think this is an American thing? Other people were saying, dude, this is just like mostly white people who just go abroad and whether it was a colony or not, they just feel like they run everything. Yeah. And that's British people, that's French people. But obviously, you know, the Americans, they tend to be the most brash about it because America, you know, for the longest time has been the number one most powerful country in the world as uh, for a lot of modern history. Yeah, I would say uh so i it looked like the woman that was next to him might have been asian it makes sense that he was with asian people in but, asia no i think that she was a worker i think he was traveling alone oh oh this guy was alone yeah man this dude is crazy he also said i own china which i've like never even heard before i don't even think donald trump has said that somebody said that this is not just unique to white people from america but just americans abroad in general saying like i run this whole thing mentality but I feel like Asian Americans would less likely say this. Let's be honest, guys. Like, I'm not saying some Asian Americans don't act wild overseas. I'm saying I've seen it before and act cocky. But I'm saying they wouldn't say something like, I own this country. This is mine. And I'm American. Right, right, right. I this dude it. was, like, leaning into that stereotype of, like, mentally colonial man, dominant American he, at a 10 out of 10 level. He did need to get smacked, man. I think when he threatened to F everybody's family member. Like, that was a crazy statement. Even though it does sound kind of almost like Asian to say that. You know how, like, they say that in Cantonese right. when they said like Diu Lei Lo Mo Hum Ga Tan. Like, yeah, right. Like, F your whole family for generations. Yeah, yeah I guess... <laughs> Maybe he was trying. I don't know. Yeah, Yo, maybe it's weird, man. Somebody said Asians. Just ask yourself if a white guy was talking to a black like guy like this or in a black restaurant. Do you think the white guy would still be standing? And someone said facts. This is why black culture is so strong. They don't let anybody disrespect them. I mean, for I, sure, I, he's not going in Harlem, the BK, yeah. or like Atlanta, but, or like Watts, and like doing this no, at like a Roscoe's. But, There's but, like zero percent. There's negative one thousand percent chance he's doing that. But we have seen videos a white dude saying crazy things to to black people and getting punched. I've seen it happen, but they're like a different type of white person. But what I'm saying is I wouldn't like just compare. I don't like comparing dynamics from Asia to America. And I say this about other things, so I have to stay consistent now. Right. Just because in America people should act differently, I think in Singapore, I have to say by Singaporean culture and how the country runs, their response was kind of, I guess, made sense to me. Somebody said, you know, it just varies per group. You can't say that all black people would punch this guy in the face, and you can't say that all Asians would stand down and be super docile like the people in the video. There is a distribution per group. Like, everybody's variable, right? Mm. Like, person to person. Even people within a family have different life experiences and different inborn personalities. Somebody said, yeah, but I always see people say, oh, the right Asians, the right Asians need to step up. There isn't enough percentage of the right Asians that would stand up to a guy like this. What do you think? Yeah, but I mean, Singapore is definitely not like that. I'm saying even if he did this in an Asian neighborhood, like out in America, like if he did this in Flushing, I think maybe the response is a little different too. I'm not saying he's getting a full-on beatdown, but I think that there is there is a different response. Right, and who's to say that a full-on, like, Jumping him would be the right response. Yeah, either. that I mean, would not be a fully. I mean, like, he wasn't fair getting response. physical yet. There's definitely times and things I've seen, even in Koreatown, that I thought, you know. But yeah, I understand. I totally understand why all these comments, Andrew, from Asian Americans in the West, are like force only understands force. Barbarians only understand barbaric things. It's true, right? To some extent, it's super triggering. It's super triggering for Asian Americans because we're like, God, this stuff happens in Asia too. And it happens to the guys a lot too. I got a personal anecdote about this. It just happened yesterday. Anyway, we're going to get into that later. Somebody said, unpopular opinion. Most Asians are too soft to fight back and all the racists know that and use it to their advantage, thus perpetuating a never-ending 
marketing cycle of people wanting to try to pick on us at every chance they get. Yeah, this is where I think that the police need to step in. And I'm not saying the police need to even arrest him, but I think they should find him and question him about this. At least just to show that the police care about this and are going to discipline this guy in some level. At least, if not discipline, at least scare him out of acting out the next time. You know it's what I mean? quite possible, too. We don't have the follow-up uh, in terms of like what exactly right. happened. He at least has a strike on his record. Yeah. Somebody said uh, he will not even be able to talk again or possibly ever be able to walk again if he did this in Thailand. Because Thailand was never colonized. And, and also there are a lot of people in Thailand, they get busy, they know Muay Thai. It's a country where they, they are ready to throw elbows and knees on foreigners. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it depends. I think everybody would like to jump to conclusions and be like, oh, if he did that around me and right, my Andrew, friends. You're saying Rod Tang's just going to come through. Yeah, and just like, pop. Uh, if he gets violent, it's different. But I'm just saying he was yelling. But yeah, I do. It is true. There's a higher percentage likelihood. Of course. Guys, we're talking about... We're talking about a nice restaurant on Orchard Road. This is a very expensive restaurant. Somebody said, man, he's messing with the wrong side of Asia. This guy's in Southeast Asia. And somebody said, no... Listen, let me tell you this. Singapore is a Chinese country in Southeast Asia. It is not like the rest of Southeast Asia. And this sort of led, Andrew, to the spicy tea talk, right? Somebody said, East Asian dudes, this is a Southeast Asian guy. East Asian dudes are too soft. You need to stand up for yourselves. Otherwise, people walk all over you. People would never treat tough-looking Southeast Asians like this. Uh, How yeah. true or yeah, untrue yeah, yeah. is this? It's definitely true. But like, I mean, like, if you're... like, It's, it's not... Like night and day, but yes, people are less likely to. I mean, if you got tattoos on and everybody sees the tattoos, they kind of think something different things about you. Come on, right, but we they all think know. You might, you're an Asian gangster and things like that. Man, we all know this is true. Come on, guys, what are we talking about? This is like the obvious. All right, let's move on to the comments from the Singaporean Reddit, Andrew. Somebody said, small dog, bakalat, big dog, keep quiet. This one, small dog. Uh. This was the top comment. It's a little bit of a deflection, but also an honest peer into the the east asian mind right right because he's look he's saying that this guy yelling actually isn't going to do anything while the big dogs usually just sit back quietly it's kind of like saying real gangsters move in silence you know that kind of thing like real gangsters right. don't talk a lot so how, how true is this and even though asian americans would see this as oh you're just using this as an excuse to not get busy on a dude who's disrespecting you yeah i think the only difference is is because like singapore is not known to be a violent country they're super well they're super anti-violent in terms of like anti-violent they they have a lot of laws so i guess that's why uh, I could see Asian Americans disagreeing with this. Somebody said, De let's deport this effort. And someone said, how about we deport all racists? And then someone said, yeah, but then some parts be very empty country. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody said, man, I hate this egg looking angmo. Angmo is a, is a slang for like this white guy. And someone said, yeah, man, he's just missing the goofy mustache. Otherwise he passed for Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> And somebody said, a lot of upper-class Singaporeans have colonial mentality. It's the same for our government. And somebody said, yeah, are you sure about that? Some upper-class folks will treat this fella and his behavior as dirt and even beneath their station. And somebody said, whether people are scared of this guy and view this Angmo or white guy above them, or they're rich Singaporeans and they view this Angmo as like lower class than them and not worth dealing with, this guy's not going to get dealt with either way. So how much of it is the reasoning versus how much is it the outcome? I mean, that's a good question, right? I don't know. Yeah, what do you think? That, that is interesting. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. Somebody said, he can't do this back home, la. He would get shot. I mean, obviously, this is the Singaporean stereotype of what would happen to him in America. Nah, he wouldn't get shot, guys. Come on, let's be honest, man. Um, but yeah, obviously, there's a more likelihood that somebody's going to step up and, and confront him in a way that he's probably uncomfortable with. Somebody said, why so many angry white people lately? Ah. And this to turn into a discussion of how potentially, because white people globally have fading dominance, even though they've had utter dominance for 100, 200, 300 years, whatever you want to say it is, that they're almost like acting up more to preserve that dominance. Yeah, I mean, think about it. If you're like a racist white individual and all you hear on the news of the past like six, seven, ten years is China's coming up, China's coming up. Oh, Singapore, greatest place to move to. Oh, Singapore, great city. Oh, like South Korean entertainment. Oh, this, this. Oh, Japanese food. Everybody loves Japanese food. Oh, Vietnamese food is great now too. Oh, Thailand. Everybody wants to go to Thailand. And then you're just thinking, uh, uh. but I was like, wait, how'd you find yourself in Singapore then? 
You know? Yeah. Like, maybe he's all here by mistake. Maybe someone forced him to go or something like that. But I don't know. Whatever, he was off his meds or he was drunk or he's just on some different type of game. But, man. Well, there was some speculation that in the West, whether it's Canada or America, this guy's like low-tier, low-value loser. So he's going to Asia to feel like a god. And he's going over there. And obviously, this incident where he showed up at the restaurant 20 minutes late and they're like not opening it for him sort of shook his sense of being a god. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's mentally ill though. Not, not as an excuse. I just think that that is true. Yeah, I think he probably was off his meds for sure. Anyway, Andrew, let's get into the takeaways. Like we said, very different reactions from the Western Asians. Very different reactions from the Eastern Asians. I mean, what is the truth, man? Is he doing this at a Latin restaurant, nah, or is it, is it the because he thinks Asians are like docile little uh, we we lobby characters? Yeah, there's definitely some race elements involved. Where if he's looking at a Latin guy saying this, I think he feels something differently. I think he's not he's not going to do that. I don't think if there's like an African server that he's saying this to, I don't think he's saying the same thing either. Um, I do think, of course, this does go back to Asian seeming weak. But I also I also want to say like, man, Singapore. It's just not the same as America, so I don't want to put those standards on Singapore. If he was doing this at, like, a Chinese restaurant in New York City... Or a Singaporean restaurant even in America. Yeah, or a Singaporean restaurant in, a, in in New York or L.A., I think that, yeah, the response would have to be a little bit more, like, forceful against him. But I think in Singapore, to be honest, I can't tell Singaporeans to be like, oh, get up and, like, fight everybody and do something that's so, so against your guys' culture, you know? Right. So it's I, so I, far outside of, yeah, like, what a normal response would be in that country. He didn't get violent yet, and he didn't really look like he was, but he did, like, say violent things. Right. But I guess once you start that physical altercation, especially in Singapore, you know, like, they're very strict about But let's that. just say he did this at a Nasi Lamuk spot near a HDB and, like, deep in I the mean, Singapore he, suburbs. Think, Somebody might be punching no, him in I the face. No, I think even if he did this at, at one of the hawker stalls, you know, like, late at night when there's a lot of, you know, more blue-collar guys hanging out there, I think people are stepping up to him and at least being like, yo, buddy, yo, bu hey, buddy, what are you doing, buddy? Or That's more Indian. Yeah, I mean, you know, the other day, Andrew, uh, we were at the basketball court, and uh, you know how, like, at the indoor courts, sometimes balls are floating around? Uh, somebody was shooting around with our ball, some, like, white frat guys, I believe, from USC, and uh, they were, like, part of an investment banker group or something like that, and I remember I was like, hey, man, uh, that's my basketball. I'm leaving now. Can I get it back? And the guy gave me, like, a ton of attitude. I don't know if he thought I was lying that that was my basketball or something like that. And I just remember thinking in my head, obviously, there's probably no other type of person that he's going to give that attitude to. Obviously, if I was black or Latino, for sure not, right? Yeah, yeah and, um, that's true. This is just an indication, I think, of like the same thing that everybody from the Asian American internet was seeing. And that's why so many guys were commenting on it, right? Yeah, I mean... I think instead of focusing on what Singaporeans should have done, yeah, it is true that you need to just focus on your friend group and you guys have a protocol and talk about what you guys would have done, I guess, like, or what you guys would do or what you have done in person. You know what I mean? Like, you, like, it's just to focus on Singapore and try to change Singaporean culture. I'm not as worried about that as I am about, like, what are Asian Americans going to do? You know, right? Because we're living in this environment, and right? Where it's like uh, barbarians understand yeah. barbarian behavior, and uh, Confucians understand Confucian behavior. Yeah, and also like even practice too. You know, like you can practice yelling at people or get your reps in because you never fully know how you're gonna react when somebody like that is yelling that in your face. You know what I mean? You your you, your adrenaline might rush. You might panic a little bit, get a little bit anxious. It's okay. That's normal. But you have to practice that and get through that so that you know how to handle tense situations. Yeah. That's my opinion. But hey, let us know what you think in the comments section below, guys. I think there's a lot of good arguments both ways. I think, you know, responses are highly contextual to, to, to what you want to do, but also the culture that you're in and what are the standard normal practices within that fishbowl. So anyway, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.